So, sadly, from the medical legal perspective, the difficulty with fibromyalgia is that there is no objective test to show, to prove or to disprove whether a claimant has fibromyalgia or not. We're dealing with claimants that often complain of one specific injury and now, a few months, a year later, they are talking about pain affecting the whole body that is stopping them being able to leave. So trying to establish a correlation can be challenging. So we have to rely primarily into looking into the historical medical records and how the symptoms have evolved. We have to be meticulous at examining if there have been consultations for pain with GPs in the past, if there have been referrals to physiotherapists. We have to look at the comments that those two professionals have made. We have to look at how the symptoms have evolved since the index events, say accident primarily, and the sort of time frame. Within a short time frame, potentially, it could be linked, but if there is a very long time frame, it's going to be very difficult to be able to link it with any degree of certainty. So those would be the challenges that I would encounter in most cases where there has been a diagnosis of fibromyalgia coming from a trivial injury affecting a foot or affecting a hand. And slowly over time, symptoms have evolved beyond the original injury. Once we have reached an opinion on a diagnosis, the treatment plan is basically down to offering support of the condition. We are dealing with a condition that potentially will be lifelong. So the main element of the treatment will be to offer tools for the claimant, for the patient, to be able to manage their own life independently without relying on consultations with healthcare professionals from time to time. Some of those methods will be a rehabilitation program involving physical and psychological rehabilitation. There is also some pharmacological help that can be given to try and help them sleep, to try and help them be a bit less restless, to try and help them with concentration, with levels of energy. We can try and help them with uh, painkillers to treat the painful symptoms. But overall, the important thing is for them to come to terms that they are in pain if they are lying down in bed. They are in pain if they are out walking. So why are they lying down in bed? They need to get up and try and do their normal living. The risk, however, if we try to be very simplistic about management, is what is called boom and bust cycles, which is where we find a patient who has a naturally undulating history of fibromyalgia, whereby some days the symptoms and disability is less, some days the symptoms and the disability is more. And they tend to lie down in bed when they feel worse and do everything they can possibly squeeze in a day when they feel better. Invariably, they will pay for it for a number of days afterwards. So a very simplistic example that I often quote to my patients is if you imagine that you have a house with four rooms, not four bedrooms, but four rooms in the house, you clean it all in one day and it takes you three days to recover, it's taken you four days to do the whole cycle. If on the other hand you do one room per day, it has also taken you the same four days, but you have not overdone it to the point of having to go to bed afterwards. So that's a very simplistic example that I try to use to illustrate what a rehabilitation program can do for them, is to try and give them the tools to understand how to fraction their levels of activity in order to achieve more whilst reducing the impact that is having on the daily living. 
Most patients will find that this is suitable, it helps them, but they find it difficult to put into practice. It's difficult to meditate in daily living. It's difficult to, for every activity, stop and make a plan. And those are the elements that we need to bear in mind when we make recommendations on the prognosis in the long term. What are the work expectations? How do we envisage that this claimant will be able to return to a full-time employment? Those are the elements that will be there forever and can only be treated with a rehabilitation program and occasional or frequent, depending on the individual, let's call it top-up sessions, to try and keep fresh in their mind the things that they can do to help themselves. Pharmacological management can help, but sadly the side effects from most analgesics are prohibitive, are, are probably to a degree incompatible with functional at a professional level. Another different treatment that could be used is infusions uh, of uh, intravenous agents such as uh, lidocaine, which is a local anesthetic, that can help, unlikely to resolve the symptoms completely, but can help a significant proportion of patients with fibromyalgia to be able to resume even a work in life. Um, I certainly do infusions for fibromyalgia with fairly good uh, results for probably about 70 patients or so for whom I do them. Now the challenge for a medical legal expert to prove or disprove a diagnosis of fibromyalgia would be when primarily when the defendant side will challenge the veracity of symptoms that are based on a diagnostic screening tick box exercise rather than based on a hard, proven diagnostic test that can be seen. The way I tend to approach this is that, sadly, that is the evolution of medicine. There were many illnesses that were considered malingering, simply because technology had not evolved enough to the point of being able to see what was wrong. A lot of entities used to be called syndromes, which is a group of symptoms that don't account to a disease because they cannot be proven to be linked to the same disease, to the same causative agent. Things have changed and some of the old so-called syndromes are now disease in its own right because technology has evolved to the point of being able to find a cause for those symptoms. I think that in the future fibromyalgia will get there technology will evolve to the point that we will develop a blood test or will develop some other objective test that with any degree of certainty will prove or disprove a diagnosis. But sadly for the time being we rely primarily on the feedback from the patient potentially in the tender points and also in looking into the long-standing historical set of notes and see what the history was before and since the index events. Lawyers, solicitors, um, barristers can help to support the clients primarily by offering them, hopefully, some interim payments for some can help by offering them the ability to be able to secure interim payments so rehabilitative treatments can be implemented before the end of litigation. They can help the clients by offering them reassurance that the symptoms that they feel are real and 
they believe them and they can help by ensuring that the right team is appointed to both deal with the medical legal case and deal with the rehabilitative treatment at the end of litigation once it all has concluded. Mm -hmm.